This tutorial is about the Kraskal Wallace test. If you want to know what the Kraskal Wallace test is and how it can be calculated and interpreted, you're at the right place. And at the end of this video, I will show you how you can easily calculate the Kraskal Wallace test online. And we get started right now. The Kraskal Wallace test is a hypothesis test that is used when you want to test whether there is a difference between several independent groups. Now you may wonder a little bit and say, hey, if there are several independent groups, I use an analysis of variance. That's right, but if your data are not normally distributed and the assumptions for the analysis of variance are not met, the kraskal wallace test is used. The kraskal wallace test is the non-parametric counterpart of the single factor analysis of variance. I will now show you what that means. There is an important difference between the two tests. The analysis of variance tests, if there is a difference in means, so when we have our groups, we calculate the mean of the groups and check if all the means are equal. When we look at the kraskal wallis test, on the other hand, we don't check if the means are equal, we check if the rank sums of all the groups are equal. What does that mean now? What is a rank and what is a rank sum? In the kraskal wallis test, we do not use the actual measured values, but we sort all people by size and then the person with the smallest value gets the new value or rank 1. The person with the second smallest value gets rank 2. The person with the third smallest value gets rank 3 and so on and so forth until each person has been assigned a rank. Now we have assigned a rank to each person and then we can simply add up the ranks from the first group, add up the ranks from the second group and add up the ranks from the third group. In this case we get a rank sum of 42 for the first group, 70 for the second group and 47 for the third group. The big advantage is that if we do not look at the mean difference but at the rank sum, the data does not have to be normally distributed. When using the kraskal wallis test, our data does not have to satisfy any distributional form and therefore we also don't need it to be normally distributed. Before we discuss how the kraskal wallis test is calculated, and don't worry it's really not complicated, we first take a look at the assumptions. When do we use the kraskal wallis test? We use the kraskal wallis test if we have a nominal or ordinal variable with more than two values and a metric variable. A nominal or ordinal variable with more than two values is for example the variable preferred newspaper with the values Washington Post, New York Times, USA Today. It could also be frequency of television viewing with daily, several times a week, rarely, never. A metric variable is for example salary, well-being or weight of people. What are the assumptions now? Only several independent random samples with at least ordinarily scaled characteristics must be available. The variables do not have to satisfy a distribution curve. So the null hypothesis is the independent samples all have the same central tendency and therefore come from the same population. Or in other words, there's no difference in the rank sums. And the alternative hypothesis could be at least one of the independent samples does not have the same central tendency as the other samples and therefore comes from a different population. Or to say it in other words again, at least one group differs in rank sums. So the next question is, how do we calculate a kraskal wallis test? It's not difficult. Let's say you have measured the reaction time of three groups, group A, group B and group C. And now you want to know if there's a difference between the groups in terms of reaction time. Let's say you've written down the measured reaction time in a table. Let's just assume that the data is not normally distributed and therefore you have to use the kraskal wallis test. So then our null hypothesis is that there is no difference between the groups. 
And we're going to test that right now. First, we assign a rank to each person. This is the smallest value, so this person gets rank 1. This is the second smallest value, so this person gets rank 2. And we do this now for all people. If the groups have no influence on reaction time, the ranks should actually be distributed purely randomly. In the second step, we now calculate the rank sum and the mean rank sum. For the first group, the rank sum is 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 9, which is equal to 22. And we have 4 people in the group, so the mean rank sum is 22 divided by 4, which equals 5.5. Now we do the same for the second group. Here we get a rank sum of 27 and the mean rank sum of 6.75. And for the third group, we get a rank sum of 29 and a mean rank sum of 7.25. Now we can calculate the expected value of the rank sums. The expected value, if there is no difference in the groups, would be that each group would have a rank sum of 6.5. We've now almost got everything we need. We interviewed 12 people, so the number of cases is 12. The expected value of the ranks is 6.5. We've also calculated the mean rank sums of the individual groups. The degrees of freedom in our case are 2 and these are simply given by the number of groups minus 1, which makes 3 minus 1. Last we need the variance. The variance of ranks is given by n to the power of 2 minus 1 divided by 12. n is again the number of people, so 12, so we get a variance of 11.92. Now we've got everything we need. With these values, we can now calculate our test value H. The test statistic H corresponds to the G-square value and is given by this formula. N is the number of cases, R bar is the mean rank sum of the individual groups and ER is the expected value of the ranks. Sigma squared is the variance of the ranks. In our case, the number of cases is 12. We always have 4 people per group, so we can pull out the NE. 5.5 is the mean rank of group A. 6.75 is the mean rank of group B. And 7.25 is the mean rank of group C. This gives us a rounded age value of 0.5. As we just said, this value corresponds to the G-square value, so now we can easily read the critical G-square value in the table of critical G-square values. You find this table on datatab.net. We have two degrees of freedom, and if we assume that we have a significance level of 0.05, we get a critical G-squared value of 5.991. So of course our value is smaller than the critical G-squared value and so based on our example data, the null hypothesis is retained. And now I will show you how we can easily calculate the kraskal wallis test online with Datatab. In order to do this, you simply visit datatab.net, you will find a link in the video description and then you click on the statistics calculator and insert your own data into this table. Further, you click on this tab and under this tab you will find many hypothesis tests and when you select the variables you want to test, Datatab will suggest the appropriate test. After you've copied your data into the table, you will see the reaction time and group right here at the bottom. Now we simply click on reaction time and group and Datatab automatically calculates an analysis of variance for us. But we don't want an analysis of variance. We want the non-parametric test. So we just click here. Now Datatab automatically calculates the kraskal wallis test. We also get a G-square value of 0.5. The degrees of freedom are 2 and the calculated p-value is 0.779. And here below you can read the interpretation in words. A kraskal wallis test showed that there is no significant difference between the categories P, 
makes 0 0.779. Therefore, with the data used, the null hypothesis is not rejected. Just try it out yourself, it's very easy. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.